Gather around the Maypole, friends! Ari Aster's Midsummer is nearly upon us. But before you head out to the festivities, you may want to know a bit about what you're getting yourself into. The name Ari Aster may not ring many bells for you. After all, Midsummer is only the second movie he's directed. But his debut was one of 2018's best horror films, Hereditary. Starring Tony Collette, Gabriel Byrne, and Alex Wolfe as a family faced with a sudden horrible tragedy, it's a slow burn of a film that ratchets up the tension all the way through before unleashing hell in its last act. Hereditary was such a total package that there was even some Best Actress Oscar buzz for Collette. She didn't receive a nomination, but the fact that she was even in consideration should tell you something about the kind of oomph that the movie is packing. Don't let Astor's small filmography fool you. If Midsummer can shake audiences like Hereditary did, he'll seal his reputation as a filmmaker who's impossible to ignore. Midsummer's trailer makes it clear that this is not a movie for the faint of heart. It looks intense, frightening, and unsettling. But the director has a few other ways to describe it that may surprise you. In a discussion with Vulture, Astor described Midsummer as, quote, a breakup movie in the same way that Hereditary was a family tragedy. It's a, a, an operatic breakup movie and, um, and a, a dark contemporary fairy tale. He also expressed his desire for the movie to be viewed on its own merits. Those who go in expecting the same thing as Hereditary are going to be disappointed. As if to make that distinction clearer, he went on to describe the movie as, quote, the Wizard of Oz for perverts. That kind of description alone should be a pretty good indicator of whether or not Midsummer is the kind of movie you should see. Oh, did I scare you? No, no. I, I just thought you hurt yourself. But I didn't scare you? No, of course not. Most of Midsummer's cast is made up of talented young actors who you may not recognize by name. Florence Pugh and Jack Rayner take the lead roles as Danny and Christian. Pugh is probably most recognizable for her role as Catherine in the 2016 film Lady Macbeth, but she also appears in films like Outlaw King, Fighting With My Family, and Marvel's upcoming Black Widow film. You might recognize Rayner's voice from the Andy Serkis-directed Mowgli Legend of the Jungle, where he played Brother Wolf. He also appeared in the film Grassland alongside Tony Collette and another of Midsummer's stars, Will Poulter. Poulter plays the character Mark, and you probably recognize him as Colin from the interactive Netflix feature Black Mirror Bandersnatch, though he also played a prominent role in the Maze Runner series. Finally, William Jackson Harper plays Josh. He's best known as conflicted ethics professor Chidi Anagonia on The Good Place. We'll have to see if his inability to solve the trolley problem comes up in Midsummer. Why don't you just tell me the right answer? Well, that's what's so great about the trolley problem is that there is no right answer. Ugh. Audiences are used to scary films being set in the dark, tricking them with shadows and obscuring the horrors lurking just outside their field of vision. It takes just a quick glance at the marketing for Midsummer to realize that this film operates a little bit differently. Everything is very bright, too bright almost. The mood seems scary, but the look is all sunlight and pastels. It makes for an eerie sense of dissonance. Even a minor detail, like the letterbox of the trailer being white instead of the usual black, is off-putting and unnerving. That lighting scheme plays into the themes and plot of the actual movie, which takes place in an environment of eternal sunlight. What time is it? 9 p.m. The bright imagery seems like it will lend itself well to an otherworldly feel, especially as the plot turns increasingly sinister. It will also make it increasingly difficult for the protagonist to find a place to hide. So what's really going on in Midsummer? According to the official synopsis, it follows Danny and Christian, a young American couple on the verge of breaking up. Following a tragedy in Danny's family, she ends up on a trip with Christian and his friends to a momentous Midsummer festival in an isolated village in Sweden. Going on a vacation to fix a broken relationship is, in real life, a terrible idea. But in the context of the movie, it adds a great deal to the sense of conflict and emotional tension between the characters. This is probably why Ari Aster describes Midsummer as a breakup movie. It's just going to be an even more unpleasant breakup than we may have ever seen before. Much of Midsummer's aesthetic comes from traditional Scandinavian holiday rituals. These Midsummer celebrations take place on a Friday in June in commemoration of the longest day of the year. The traditions date back to pagan rituals designed to win the favor of the sun god. The Midsummer Festival is a big deal in Sweden. Typical decorations involve plenty of flower garlands and wreaths, and businesses shut down so that people can have the entire day to celebrate. Right now, summer in Sweden, are you going to go back and celebrate and um, have a hang out? And probably our biggest holiday of the year. It's bigger than New Year's, I would say, called Midsummer. Maypoles for dancing and gigantic bonfires are common. 
And as the festivities wind down, there is often a reading of fortunes so people can determine who they will marry in the future. Obviously, the celebration in the film isn't exactly like these traditional rites, but those traditions do serve as a clear inspiration for the more horrifying rituals the movie has in store. If Midsummer proves successful, you might see Ari Aster's name thrown around as a new master of horror, but if you're expecting him to follow this film up with another horror feature, you probably shouldn't hold your breath. When IndieWire spoke with Astor about the film, the director made his intentions for future projects clear, saying, Midsummer is the only other horror movie I have, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be it for a long time. I love the genre. I consider myself a genre filmmaker in that I want to play in every genre. I would love to make a musical. He also shared that he's in the process of writing a sci-fi film and has four or five movies from his backlog of scripts, quote, ready to go. He isn't saying that he'll never return to horror, but it does seem like, if he has any say in the matter, it won't happen again for a while. Horror movies usually have fairly brief runtimes. After all, it can be a challenge to keep upping the stakes of a story without exhausting the audience to the point of checking out. Midsummer is an exception. You probably want to hit the bathroom before settling in to watch it, since the movie sports a runtime of 2 hours and 20 minutes. That sounds fun. Even Hereditary couldn't quite slow burn its way to that length. That movie is 13 minutes shorter than Midsummer's final cut. So don't go into this movie expecting something simple or easy to digest. Like many of the great horror movies, it's not something to just sit back and watch. It's an experience to endure. If you like your horror movies with loud noises and obvious jump scares, you may want to steer clear from Midsummer, a film with a director who hesitates to even refer to it as a horror movie. In a conversation with Fandango, Astor danced around questions about just how scary Midsummer is, saying, It's really leaning more on suspense than it is scares. In some ways, it's more surreal. This is an adult contemporary fairy tale. It's worth keeping in mind that fairy tales can be pretty horrifying in their own right. If you don't believe us, go check out Grimm's Fairy Tales. Or, for a more modern take, many of the films of Guillermo del Toro. And remember, just because Midsummer doesn't look like a horror film doesn't mean it won't scare the living daylights out of you. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite horror movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.